Yeah, I'm the one who sent you all the emails. <laughs> like, oh, you look careful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she applied for our startup contest this year. Yeah. So um, basically, um, what we do is like organizing events that help startups and the, the local small business, and also people who are interested in entrepreneurship and the innovation to apply pro provide them a platform for them to connect and network with each other and also find new market or partnership or new resource. Like what we do today is um, provide our um, startup or people who are interested in big data and cloud computing and we are cooperating with SAP Startup Fox program and they have the special allocate here and tell us how to do the um, data processing in Think about it. Uh, real time data processing with in memory technology. Oh, all these cool awesome stuff. words <laughs> that I just pronounced. Yeah, so it should be really cool. Um, before, um, I would like to introduce Eric. Eric, uh, Eric Du. Yeah, okay. she will, he, he will be the <laughs> <laughs> guy, sorry. Uh, I have been a really busy day recently. Yeah, so he works for a handed, uh, SAP startup. Focus program, program, and he's a, a HANA development um, architect. And what SAP Startup Fox programs do is to help early stage companies to leverage the breakthrough compa capabilities of SAP's in memory data management platform to build real time applications, which Eric will introduce you guys more about that. And before we start the session, uh, I would like to talk about what we do first. Um, uh, what we do is you can find on the table there are some flyers. Um, it, it tells about thing that called the SVIEF, Silicon Valley Innovation and Entrepreneurship Forum. And this is our third year doing this. And we are really going to have a lot of speakers coming this year, including the former Vice President Al Gore and um, the co-founder of Apple Company, mm -hmm. Steve Wozniak. And also, um, Mark Zuckerberg's sister, <laughs> Randy Zuckerberg. <laughs> yeah. And also, um, the VP from um, Facebook, we just confirmed this day. And also, potentially, um, the CIO from Tesla. Yeah, wow. Tesla is really popular. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have a lot of effort trying to contact them and reach out to them. And also, some VPs from big companies like. Um, uh, VMware, um, Juniper, and IBM, and also we are doing different sessions covering all of this, um, like um, cloud computing panel discussion, VC panel discussion, and the uh, round table that covering topics including new energy, environmental sustainability, smart city, and things like that. You can find all this information on the on slide. Um, and if you have any question, you can always shoot me the email. My email is what you got <laughs> for this notice. And if you, it's the first time you attend our event, you can sign up your email address and telephone number downstairs when you check check up before you come. So leave your message, and we want to keep you updated for our future events. And you can also feel free to join our event on November second in Santa Clara Community Center, the SAIEF. And next, let's welcome Eric. Thank you, Cindy. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, it's fine. I think it's doing small, so can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, so today we are going to introduce you a new big data platform uh, from SAP. We call it SAP HANA. What does HANA mean? I don't know. <laughs> wow. Uh, it's a, a type of flower in Hawaii, I think. It's very nice, and uh, uh, from SAP point of view, it's an application of high analytics platform. Okay, so maybe I can use this. <laughs> yeah, so before we jump to the details, I want to ask a few questions for you guys. Did any of you have experience on uh, open source platform like Hadoop or NonSQL DB, MongoDB? I think that's cool. And uh, did you hear about SAP HANA before? Okay, okay, that's the same person. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Actually, we also have a guest from one of our members of our program here. Thomas is over there. <laughs> he is from a uh, startup in Germany, uh, in our <coughs> program, and he recently moved to the US for an exchange program, right? Mm. Go ahead. <coughs> so, this is going to be our agenda for today. First of all, we'll uh, take a few minutes to introduce the SAP Starbox program, what we do, and how we helps the startups to build solutions on HANA. Right? It's not only technology, but we also provide some marketing support as well as the event support. I will go to the details. So we um, take a few more time to introduce about HANA uh, high-level techn technology overview. Uh, if we have time, probably we can spend a few more minutes to go to the deep level. Uh, that's it. So why we do this? This is a view from top of SAP. So Dijasik, he is a CTO and the board member of SAP. Now he is also the head of all development and research organizations with SAP. So uh, SAP is well known as the biggest success, most successful enterprise software provider in the world. Right nowadays. 85% of the big enterprise in the world, they are running behind, the, behind SAP. Something like uh, Apple. Did anyone of you know the Apple store is running with SAP? Nobody knows that, right? <laughs> there are so many big companies that are running on SAP. But as a big as SAP, we realize we, are not, we cannot provide everything for our customers, right? So we are looking for the imaginations beyond the world of SAP. So we welcome the startup to build solutions and go in market with SAP. That's the, that's the purpose of the program. And that's um, the slogan of the survey, how we want to achieve. So we launched the program globally, startup on US. Then we went to European, Asia, Pacific, Japan last year. And uh, this year, we went to more company, uh, more, more countries and more cities in the world. Um, also in China. So my law, my law I have two laws actually in, in our organization. The first law is HANA architect. So basically I work with the startup directory to help them to solve the problems every problem or every technical obstacle they are facing during the development phase and uh, guide them through the entire process until go to the SAP as my official law. And my unofficial law is actually I uh, respond for everything in China as well. So I went back to China in August uh, to organize a startup forum there with more than 60 startups registered and more than 30 startups attended for the phone and the boot camp training. So we offer two day events there. The first day is more like the business centric. The second day is a whole day hands on and the technical uh, training. So we also, we have a partnership with the FBIEF startup on there. Because that's the way, reason why I'm here today. <laughs> so yeah. Now in 2013, we also went to Australia, uh, South Africa, and uh, uh, South America. So basically, we are covered all the world, all over the world right now. So this is how the startup form in Shanghai looks like. We have, uh, I think, it's quite a lot of people here. So mm -hmm. most of them they came from the big data and the real time and energy startup. And we also have. Uh, Four group of people sitting beside the table for the exercises. This is for the next, on the second day. Yeah, both of both of me. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a summary, a brief summary of the status of the program right now. We have over sixty <coughs> six hundred fifty startups in the program all over the world. I think thirty percent made from US and. Uh, uh, maybe more, uh, thirty percent from APJ, forty percent from European, and then right now we have uh, over 
30 startups they are basically have make their solution marketing ready on HANA. So we SAP we already helped them to sell their products to SAP customer or bring them uh, the opportunities. <coughs> what we have in the SAP ecosystem and the SAP channels. Right. And we cover fifty five countries of the world. The most important here is 60% of the user case, they are outside of SAP's traditional domain. That's what we ask. Do you want to Does SAP OEM software for uh, Yeah, OEM is one model. We have several license model. OEM is one, which means you can sell your software on HANA, go with a box right, to the customer directory. And we also support SAS model, so you deploy your application on the cloud. You sell, uh, you can also sell that solution to SAP customer. Yeah, we're bringing the opportunities for this. Can I ask a very basic question? What is SAP? Hmm? Oh, SAP. SAP is the biggest enterprise software in the world. Uh, we basically we are famous uh, with our ERP system, which is enterprise planning. Mm -hmm. SAP for what? Yeah. SAP. SAP. Is it the matter? <laughs> now it's like SAP is like what is a brand. Now SAP, I think it is um, uh, 18 most famous brand in the world. Number 18, I think, last year, or maybe number 19, like, I, I don't remember. But SAP stands for System Application Pro Processing. Products. Pro products or process processing. Nobody care about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this is what our startups do. Uh, different categories you see. Um, because mm -hmm. HANA is uh, more like um, analytics platform. So it makes sense. Uh, we have 25% of startups they are basically doing business intelligence visualization uh, it's not only for the traditional enterprise world it's also for uh, some uh, new or uh, modern uh, website application and we also have startups 70% of startups they do social media integration or social media analysis they fetch this data from Facebook open page or from Twitter and based on that they do digital marketing or smart marketing uh, to do campaign monitoring uh, based on interactions in the social media platform. Uh, we also have started doing gaming, and they track the user behavior of the players in the games, and uh, uh, analytics the uh, right business model to sell some uh, something to the players, right? So they optimize the revenue generator based on that. And we also have startups that do uh, predictive analysis. So, or uh, even more complex analytics. And also, we have software startups that are making a robot. A robot, they install several sensors in the robot and take the robot work away along the plan to do something and do the real time calculation based on what it see or what uh, it hear. That's cool, right? Uh, that's it. And what's the process? How was the process to work with SAP Starbucks program for startup? It's quite simple. We have three steps over there. The first step is startup form. Uh, just like I shared, we run the form all over the world. Uh, today is not a form. Today is more like a boot camp, but actually, we will not cover too much technology in to deep level, so could be something like phone. Uh, basically, for the phone, it's for more for learning or more for uh, understand what the program it is, what benefits start can get from SAP. Then the second step is the development accelerator. So for the 
Usually it comes together. So the first day is the startup for the second day is the boot camp for which in which you can learn the technology itself. You can get your HANA system up and running on that day and you can do the real time you can do the exercises we we play the, play the examples and exercises for you so you can do that. Um, so the milestone from first step to second step is actually you think HANA as a technology is fit to your user case and uh, you want to go with us, then you submit your HANA solution proposal we, we call. It's uh, not necessary to go to very deep level in about the project plan, how many effort you want to invest, but it just uh, focus on what the business problem and how SAP HANA can help you to solve the business problem. So that's a milestone between step one and step two. And during the step two, you can get the technical support to help you uh, to uh, build something, build a proof of concept of HANA first. Then we will verify, validate the POC and also help you to build a commercial uh, solution or commercial product <coughs> in HANA. So during this phase, you can get, you can access HANA expertise at any time you want. Usually we will set up a weekly check meeting. Um, anything you facing, any problem or any issue during your development, you can get the support as soon as possible. Then the milestone from two step two to step three is uh, you pass the validation. So which means that your solution on HANA is marketing ready. With that, we can bring you together with your solution to SAP customer or go to SAP events. So this is a, a, a same context but include the two milestones. So submit HANA solution description and the deliver product solution. And after that, uh, we will help you on the marketing and the sales to uh, big SAP HANA customer base in the world. There's a few, actually it's not all, but a few old startups in the program already. Um, I don't think JC Analytics is in scale, but we will try to put it in. Uh, we have Adamast, Miao Zhen, and GFT. Maybe they are all Chinese, Chinese startups you may know. Adamast and Miao Zhen, actually they are the lead digital marketing in China, marketing company in, the, in China. And we also have stuff like Bizai because they are uh, actually startups and uh, they get funding from SAP, uh, from SAP Venture. And uh, recently we announced SAP acquired this startup company, which is a member of our program. It's finally acquired by SAP. So that's all different benefits for uh, startup to be a member of program. Uh, there could be the marketing and <coughs> sales support, uh, funding opportunity, and um, even opportunity to acquire by SAP. Right. Do you have any prices on current internal in every country in the world? Yeah, so actually, this is the second to last slide for the startup focus program overview, so we will have more time to focus on technical side. I'm not a marketing guy, I don't want, actually I hate to do this. <laughs> <laughs> can, can I ask the last marketing question? Uh, 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 what is the typical size of the startup company that you support? It's actually, we don't just check to any uh, criteria or any size of a company, it's all open. So what we are looking for is only about the user case. So if your use case is fitting or suitable for HANA, or suitable for the technology, we will welcome you to the program. So it, it, no matter how big you are. Of these companies on the screen, ah. what are the typical sizes? Oh, it, it's, it's quite a diversity set of startups here. So we have at most, uh, they probably have more than 500 employees already. And we have something like uh, and generally just two percent, <laughs> just two or three percent. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's totally different. What, 
what kind of uh, uh, domain knowledge are you expecting in the uh, cell? Expect the cell oh. have, you know, mm -hmm. in, in large database management, in applications, in networking, in server, there's hundreds of different. Yeah. Right? So yeah. Any, any particular domain you expect to develop? Yeah, it, it, it needs some uh, particular mm -hmm. knowledge mm -hmm. on the database level. Yes, it's it's required, but we all cover this in the HANA technology okay. overview. Okay. So but even in, within database, there's many, many subspecialties. Yes, right? yes. So, but it's compared compared to other provide other database much easier to use. Um, we all cover this. So SQL is a minimal requirement, at least to have some SQL knowledge to know how to interact with the database, right? Yeah, too many things. There are also too many engines embedded mm -hmm. in HANA, so it really depends on the user case. If your user case require, for example, geospatial processing, yeah. Yeah, you probably have to know your special uh, reference or knowledge about that, right? Know how to uh, to calculate the distance, the so awkward distance, or something. And if you do the text analysis, if you want to extract some meaningful information from a text, you probably have to know some text knowledge, analysis knowledge, right? So it really depends on the user case. But all these engines are already inside HANA, so I will cover this. About HANA? Yeah, I will do that just right after these slides. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we see here, so we go to the next topic. So this is last slides for our program. What do we offer? Uh, we offer six categories of support right now. Of course, technology you can uh, immediately access the HANA software for free. We deploy the HANA software on AWS, on Amazon Web Service Cloud. So it's uh, free to use. And we provide technical resource to support the development. Uh, and once the marketing solution is running on HANA, we provide the customer engagement support. So startups can access SAP global customer base. And uh, we also provide the opportunity to get the funding from SAP Venture. But this is not a guarantee. Uh, SAP Venture, they have their specific rules to uh, validate or to pick which stuff they want to invest. But from a member of our program, we can do the introduction to SAP Venture. So it has the opportunity. Uh, we also provide community support, like just like today. <laughs> And um, it's actually no equity from us. We don't take any equity from the startups. So our purpose is to make SAP HANA as a developer platform with a uh, big amount of application running along, just like an EPP store. Uh, but we don't invest the startups. Usually we don't invest the startups and uh, take any equity from the startups. So let's go to the technical overview. Mm -hmm. So, why HANA? Uh, how HANA comes from was the idea behind that we bring this new software to the world. If you're looking at today's uh, technology uh, improvement, you will realize hardware improvement is much, much faster than software, right? Like CPU, the uh, speed of processing in CPU usually is doubled every year, or even every eight months, according to Intel uh, architecture, right? However, software, the old software, they can not take advantage of the new hardware, right? Like most of the database today, they are designed maybe 10 years ago or 20 years ago. At that time, CPU don't have multiple cores, right? At that time, memory is still quite expensive. 
you cannot have big DRAM in your server. So the software was designed to fit the hardware requirement for that time, but it's not improved from that time. So HANA is invented in 2011. It's designed to do this to fit the modern soft hardware architecture and do the uh, parallelization execution utilize the multiple CPU core. So that's the uh, reason behind and that's what we think is the opportunity to change the world again with uh, uh, in-memory computing. So what we do is we move all the data storage from disk to memory, which is quite impossible right? if you uh, haven't heard this concept before, but we did it and we have over 2,000 customers right now running on HANA already. Then after we move the data from uh, disk to memory, and we store the data in colonel store usually. So we, I will introduce the difference between load store and the colonel store. Um, Usually, current store have a high compilation rate, so you can compilate your data uh, much better in current store. And uh, it's fairly flexible, so if you want to take a column of a data from the storage to map to uh, execution, it is much faster, so you don't need to scan all the load of data. Uh, it's also for the compilation. And uh, in addition to that, we actually allowed to deploy HANA as a cluster. So it's totally uh, support data partitioning. So you can store a table in this node or store uh, these loads of data in this, this node and store another uh, part of the data of a table in another node. It's totally uh, allow you to deploy HANA as a cloud. Right. And, uh, because of the column store, there's no need for any index anymore. Usually, if you want to access data faster in the database, you have to build some index, right? Hmm? What kind of uh, format do you store the data? What is your database data? Huh? D database data file. Uh, yeah. Any kind of? No. Any database, it has its own format. It's own yeah, its own format. So you mean if I have a data, I have to transfer mm. the data stored into HANA's? Oh, we have, yes, we have, do, do have several options to move your data from existing database to HANA. For example, we provide, no, there's no conversion required. So basically we provide tools for you. So we provide software to allow you to pull your data from MySQL or from HANA to the cluster to HANA. And uh, uh, you can also, import your data in CSV file or Excel file or XML format, any format from your existing system to HANA. What about video? Video. Video uh, stream. Right now, we didn't support too much for video stream right now. Uh, but we can take this offline. <coughs> That's eight. Is there maximum number of nodes clustered? Right now, we have we build a cluster in Santa Clara. That's our biggest data center right now. It have one hundred node. With each node is one terabyte uh, memory size. So in total, it's one hundred tel terabyte uh, memory size. What's the, what's the speed? Speed. It's real, real time, near real time. So how do you define real time? <laughs> I mean, the last piece. Mm -hmm. What does it mean? Less than one second. Oh, mm -hmm. less, than less, less than one second. Yeah, there's a minimal requirement for a mobile application as well. <laughs> Response point time. Yeah. So we have have a big data center in Santa Clara. It's one hundred node with with one terabyte bit each node. Uh, so in total, it's 100 terabyte. But 
Chris Collins store is high by a higher complexion later I will introduce later. So actually you can put more than uh, ten hundred or one more than one thousand terabyte data <coughs> into memory. So the core of the HANA is still a SQL database. It's a still a relational database management system. Right? So you can still use SQL to access the database. Right? And uh, we provide different options to, to for you uh, to connect with HANA. So here I have uh, out and in here, out is basically how to connect with HANA. In is about how to move data to HANA, right? So out here, we still provide ODBC, JDBC. So that's the easiest way for you to migrate your solution to HANA. And uh, for BI, we provide BI CS, uh, dedicated for business intelligence. So to use the existing business intelligence tool to interact with HANA. And we have MDX, which will allow you to connect to HANA using ODBO with Excel or some other OLAP tools. Right? And uh, most importantly, for most uh, web application or uh, mobile application, we provide the OData uh, RESTful service, which is implemented as OData protocol uh, by Microsoft. So you can expose your data, your views or tables in HANA using HTTP protocol with data format JSON or XML. This is a very, see, very easy to use. I will show you if we have enough time. So basically, this is the uh, easiest way to build an application on HANA. And we always recommend it to go through all data if possible. Yeah, that's about the interface we provide and uh, below is how the data move in into HANA. So we have a software called Data Services. It's um, part of SAP BobJS portfolio to allow you to do batch transfer from MA system, from SAP or SAP system, and uh, uh, also allow you to transfer either structured data, like relation database data or unstructured data, like text graph or text or image right? and we also provide that option to integrate with Hadoop uh, using, using data services. And we have also have SAFT, System Landscape Transportation, which is actually uh, loaded data from database log uh, to allow you to integrate with HANA in real time. So if you are asking for real time, this is LT is a way how you transfer your data from existing database to SAP HANA. <coughs> and we also have a DCX allow you to uh, export your data from traditional existing BW system using HTTP protocol to export data from BW system to HANA. So this is basically the database itself and how you interact with the database. But along the database, we also embed a lot of engines or libraries, which is free, which is powerful, which is very easy to use to allow you to build applications on HANA. So what we have, so we have business function library. Uh, most of the financial company usually will use this. And we have predictive analysis library. We implements the algorithms inside the HANA. And you just call these algorithms to predict, to do classification, uh, uh, association analysis, as well as time series analysis using PAL. And we also integrate with R. Anyone here familiar with R? Okay, it's also the same person. <laughs> okay. R is quite a famous uh, the open source technology for statis statistic analysis, right? So we have a vector-oriented integration with R, which means it's very fast. Uh, you can uh, store your data in HANA, and then using R, call R function to calculate the data in, HANA, in R console, 
and so that then uh, listen the data back to um, that's us. And uh, we also have polar polo calculation, which is a calculation engine, a uh, script engine, allowed to uh, run scripts on HANA. And we also support unstrapped data, uh, which is a more like text search and text analysis, allow you to pull the data from Twitter, or from your email, or from your PDF file, from your mm -hmm. any type of text to HANA, and uh, uh, help you to understand what does that text mean, to extract the useful information for you. Right? And we also have, uh, we even have uh, uh, application server embedded in HANA, we call Access Engine or Access Server. So it's an embedded application server. Uh, with that architecture, actually we don't need any additional application server. So it's a two-tier architecture. You just uh, run, land your UI in your client, and then you put everything in your server in HANA. So this is also the best way to get the performance because the application logic is running inside the database. So you don't need to move the data from the database to the application server. Right? Usually that uh, could be a bottleneck for some uh, application with the big data calculations. You see with this architecture, you can minimize the data transfer between different tiles. Okay, that's a uh, whole picture about it. So, uh, that's cool. I mean, two tier instead of three tier. I mean, combining a database server with a server. Mm -hmm. How does have? Do you know how does Hana handle different? Mm -hmm. For example, if Hana is deployed on one server, one node, mm -hmm. if that node is out of memory, or for some time, for some certain reason, CPU, you know, consumption is you know uh, beyond the limit. Mm -hmm. How does that? Uh, HANA itself handles scheduling. First of all, that could not happen. So HANA will do the load balance for you. So it will now dispatch also work to a single node and uh, crash that node, right? So... What, what, what do you mean? Uh, I mean, load, I don't know load balance, but if, I mean, I have a cluster, say, mm -hmm. five nodes, right? Yeah. Okay. And HANA going to be run on every node on that cluster. Yeah. Now, even the, I mean, those five nodes, unified memory, we have auto memory. Mm -hmm. So how, how do you deal with that? Mm -hmm. First of all, there's no auto memory issue. So HANA will detect and uh, do this automatically for you. If it thinks your load too many data into memory, it will push down some uh, data from memory to disk, if, uh, which we call lazy loading. or which we call so odd, uh, odd shape. I mean, sacrifice Let me just give you an example. Yeah. So, anyone here know NBA, the National Basketball Association? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everybody know that? Right? Do you watch the game? game? <laughs> Do you know NBA's long status in HANA? Anyone know that? Mm -hmm. No, I, I could show you a family if you want. So what NBA do is they put all the historical records of each player, each team, each game, all the seasons, all the teams to the in-memory database. And uh, they do the real-time calculation to allow you to run the compilation between players, between teams, and they even help you to predict which team can win the next game in a playoff, maybe? Yeah, and it's a, they have very fancy UI to show that. Maybe we have time, we can show that in two or three minutes. Uh, NBA is running on HANA, and NBA is using Access application server. So if you're asking about the scalability, think about how many fans of, the, of NBA in the world, right? How many user, concurrent user can be accessed the NBA website at the same time? Probably it should be more than five, thousand or five hundred thousand, I don't know. But it's totally running on access server. Right. So let's say if I want to run a web search engine on this. Mm -hmm. So how does it work? 
Search engine is embedded in HANA, so you don't need any search engine anymore. So HANA, first way is a calling store. It's actually the structure how search engine organize data, right? And uh, uh, we have embedded uh, enterprise search engine called TLOX inside the HANA. Actually, it's fairly important the component of SAP HANA as well. Um, I'm not sure I will have time, but if we, I have time, I can show you how the text and text search engine uh, inside HANA, it, how it works. Maybe we can take this off and be interested in that. So there are two how, ways. How the, how the handle okay. I, I really scaling. Yeah, so there are two options for scalability, right? Everybody knows it's scale out or scale up, right? We increase memory or CPU cost in one node is called scale up. And then you have the add additional node is about scale out, right? So <coughs> first of all I HANA is applied. So you buy the hardware together with software. And uh, HANA is support of distributed uh, deployment, which means you can have multiple nodes. You can, if you have enough money, yeah, you can buy more box, just use a standby. So if one node it fails, it will, the so standby node will automatically take the task from the uh, future node, right? And, uh, but I want to make it clear right now, it's this option is not available in Amazon because the uh, instance we provide on Amazon is a minimal requirement to run this software, right? But it's free, so it's free. You think about how, what the price of HANA in the enterprise world, it could be more than $100 million for, for the big customer like NBA, they do. But they do a level, but <coughs> yeah, appliance is always, always, uh, your choice. And the question is made, where do you think uh, some of the uh, actual bottlenecks are, mm -hmm. uh, or could be, mm -hmm. today? You know, I'm sure there are. Yeah, so I, will, uh, right? I have a slide for you, like, okay. slide out slide. So it's, um, maybe it's about this kind of memory. Yeah. Well, well that's one area. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows that this works with the mm -hmm. task mm -hmm. and the hard disk, you know, the hard disk versus the SOC. Mm -hmm. this person. Maybe let's go through the slide first. I will keep your question in mind and I'll be asking you later, okay? So let's take example. What's the difference between column stock and lost stock? Why we say column stock is much faster? So uh, the big example, it's a very simple example is about today's population in the world. So how many person, two men in the world is probably near 8 billion, or close to 8 billion, right? And if you store first name, last name, gender, country, city, birthday, so each lot takes about 200 bytes uh, size for each lot. So if all these records are stored in a database, I want to ask one simple question, how many women or how many men in the world? Right, it's a very simple query. Let's see 
how colon store and the low store handles this simple question in the database. So if you run uh, store the data in a in a low store, uh, have with eight billion records, multiple two hundred bytes, it's about one point six TB for the for the size of that thing. And uh, for the today's data, the scan rate of a CPU core is about two GB per second per core. Right. So with this, you can actually predict how fast this will be calculated in the, in the memory. So this is about, even if this is about the memory, so for this case, it takes much time, uh, and it's not predictable because this is, um, you have to see how the point pick the right data, but memory is totally predictable. Right? So it takes about 800 seconds to, pro to process this data. Uh, with some modern, uh, some new database, it provides dread access, which this can skip some uh, data. But it, even with that, it should still take 256 seconds to process this simple question. So this is about, keep in your mind, this is about the low store. So what is column store? Column store is something like this, right? So amongst 8 billion humans in the world, how many first names do you think in the world? And how many last names do you think in the world? Actually, it's here. <laughs> so it's about 500 million uh, first names. So think about the data values, the unique data values, 500 million fears 8 billion, right? This is about the first name, but think about gender. It's just two values, male or female, right? So you just need one bit to, stay, to store this information. How many countries in the world? 250 mm -hmm. less than, right? How many cities, how many birthdays? So with colon store, we do the dictionary encoding. So we don't store the real values, we do the encoding, and they only they store the ID in the database. So this, with that, you will see the term colon store, it only takes about 92 GB, while low store takes 1.6 TB, right? So that's about 17, 7 to 1 compression rate. So this is the first advantage about uh, colon store. So in that case, how much time it takes by one CPU call? It just takes 0 0.5 seconds compared to 800 seconds, right? So the speed of colon store and the memory processing is about 1,600 times faster than low store. Even the low store is in memory, right? That's the reason why we take the memory store, uh, colon store, uh, we look at the colon store for uh, real time or for uh, fast or quick calculation on the, on the data. In addition, how you, what's your data structure? If you think about today's data structure in the database, usually you calculate the value from certain column, right? For example, like retail industry, you have the product name, product ID, product price, discount, right? All these value that are sitting in the same column. So what you can do is just pick this column to memory and then do the calculation together. You don't need to move data from here to there, right? So that's the basically idea why HANA is fast, right? So here are the here are some more building blocks in HANA, uh, like we already covered some, like uh, column store and the load store, and the multiple core parallelization. So HANA is implementing C and the C++ level, and the everything we can say is parallelization. The ability to use multiple CPU core in today's hardware architecture is so important for software, right? And we have the in-memory compilation, which allow you to stay, store more, uh, a bigger, even bigger data volume than the size of the memory, right? And uh, 
uh, <coughs> we are allowed to do data partitioning to support a manifold node. And the very important is FQL is still the standard way to use HANA. It's not not like some other non-SQL database like MongoDB. You have to learn some new skills, right? So with FQL, you can easily move your application or move your system from traditional database to HANA without any code change, right? That's the easy story. But if you want to optimize, that's another story. You have to do some coding. So if you want to crawl the web, what up, which function do you use? Hmm? If you want to crawl the web? Crawl the web? Crawl. Crawl. Oh, yeah. Yeah, crawl the web crawlers? Robot page. Mobile crawl. application? Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. Like, like Google, you go through every crawl. web page. Crawl. 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 Okay. Go through every web page and index. <coughs> how, how do you do that? You mean the spider? To yeah, like a spider. Spider. Like spider. Uh, we don't provide a spider. So, uh, yeah, usually you have to run the uh, data fetcher, right? You can fetch data from either from website or from data or from anywhere else. But you can put all this data to HANA. And the you can simply just create a full text index and we provide several options that allow you to do fuzzy search or to do uh, Google-like search or even uh, LO, LO, LO installation search and we also allow you to do text analysis on that. I have a, actually I have a learning example for on that so maybe we can show you later if we have enough time. What, what is your store of Eight data. Eight. This one. Which one? No, but the other. Which one? A and P. A and P. Data. This one. So this this is about the version controlling inside the database, right? So we support the time solo data, which is a table type in HANA. So basically it's a different table type in the HANA. Keep all the history like and allow you to put and uh, switch active or passive data there. Is there any networking subsection? No. No? No. So there's hundreds of nodes connected together. Yes, like connected. It's, it's a it's a cloud it's a cluster. But the so mm. networking section mm. that the networking tabs. Mm -hmm. I don't know, meaning, you know, how fast oh, no, we, we have that, yeah. but it's not covered here. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah, it's, okay. yeah. So the it's a GB network. If I, meaning if I push that button, A, that will store all the old data coming up as active? Yeah, not, not as simple as push button, but we do provide um, HANA Studio, which is an Eclipse-based Eclipse IDE tools allow you to do administration task uh, as well as development task uh, using the same tool. So we provide you, you have to switch. Yeah, you have to switch, yeah. So a quick question. What kind of uh, data processing tasks a typical user perform on a HANA node? I mean, you mentioned that uh, HANA combining a data dynamic data store, uh, mm -hmm. Do the processing. Mm -hmm. So, which kind of computational tasks are they very simple tasks like aggregation, queuing, counting, or very uh, complicated tasks? Like, um, heavy machine learning. It's really depends on the user case of course. Machine learning is part of them. So, this is a whole picture of the HANA platform from the architecture point of view. So, your question is more like this here. So, we have the geospatial engine I mentioned for geospatial data processing. Uh, we have text engine which allow you to do text analysis, text mining. And uh, we have search engine here, right? So we you provide an API? Yeah, yeah. So it's a, something like SDK to allow, to allow you to do this. Uh, and uh, there's even something not mentioned here. So we have graphic engine as well. And maybe I can give you an example. Uh, anyone here watch a Formula 1 game, Formula 1 racing? Nobody here. F1. 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 Yeah. F1. <laughs> yeah. The car racing. Yeah. So one of the uh, British team called McLaren. Uh, 
uh, they using HANA, they put a sensor in their cars to check the temperature of tires, the speed, the driver behavior, and they put all these data. You know, you think about Formula One, it generates a big amount of data in every second, maybe, right? In each, each yeah, each in <coughs> that they using this data to help the driver to understand the car, to help the team to optimize the strategy of the game. Right. So they, that's something using geospatial engine together with in-memory calculation. Sometimes they use predict analysis level. So predict what could happen in the next round. Yeah, so those tasks are actually are not very computationally intensive. For some very uh, heavy machine learning problem, I don't think you can accomplish in real time. Within second level, I don't think. Okay. Which is that can you give me an example then? I mean, for example, in machine learning, there are some tasks that actually, in from computer science point of view, it's an empty hard problem. Mm -hmm. You cannot finish even in a let alone in real time. Mm -hmm. Even in non real time offline, you cannot uh, uh, finish. Within, I mean, in from monomial time, which is gone, gone forever. If we want to get an optimal solution. Yes, that's true. So in some cases, like simulation or planning engine, it could be take, a, uh, may usually take several days to execute. Yeah, that's, that's, that's it. So, 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 so how far away from real time? <laughs> real time is not a simple word. For example, we have a customer, say, okay, running. It's not achievable. In some case, every task you can achieve one to uh, complete in one second is not possible. Let's in some case, back to scalability problem. If your cluster can scale infinitely, mm -hmm. then of course you can solve any problem. You know, in, in, in formidable problem you can solve. If your cluster can grow infinitely, but the problem is you cannot grow your cluster. I can, but it depends on how much money you I mean, invest. Yeah, that's, a, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how much money you invest. Well, anyway, is there a question problem with the dollars? It's about your ROI, right? Yeah. You, <coughs> you really want to execute something like machine learning in one second? I don't think so, right? Yeah, that really depends. There's so, so many uh, machine learning algorithms. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so, so, for example, we have customers, they run their BR report before it's about 24 hours to get the result. And with HANA, we can help them to reduce 26 seconds or something like this. In that case, it's improved a lot, but we cannot promise every task can be reached to one second. Yeah. Yes. So how do you uh, ensure data security? Because uh, the mm -hmm. data is flowing among the nodes mm -hmm. within the same, uh, same cluster. Okay. How do you ensure that your data is secure? Yeah, so maybe we need another two hours, or three hours to cover that. No, no, so you, about you just the answer my question, just in, in one sentence, you know, how do you do that? You know? Okay, so <laughs> for the security and the authentication, as well as the authorization, yeah. it's also a big topic in HANA. So it's also redesigned in HANA, in database level. Uh, maybe no, just a data transfer. I mean, do you use HTTPS or you use SSH? Yes, HTTPS. So, you're asking about the, today's bottleneck in the software, in the industry, right? So this is how today's uh, architecture looks like. You're using CPU, memory, and the disk. Disk for storage, memory, and CPU for uh, uh, calculation data, storage, and the calculation, right? <coughs> so the bottleneck for the architecture is access to disk is about 1 million or 10 million times slower than memory access, right? So, for example, the access to CPU, CPU have different level of caches, right? To access the first level cache is about 1.5 nanoseconds, right? And the memory access is very close to CPU. It's just about 10 or 15 or 4 times slower than CPU access. However, if you compare 60 here, with here is about um, 20,000 or even 10 million uh, nanoseconds for disk access. So you see the difference between disk and memory. 
like that's that's the way why we think the next way to define a software which can fully leverage the excess of memory instead of disk. <coughs> However, somebody may ask why if everything is in memory, how about when the power suddenly off? How to uh, where the lost data when out of outage of power, right? So Tana also use disk for backup and then recovery. Backup, that's disaster that's recovery. Right? It's just for backup and disaster recovery. Uh, and the, each transaction you run in memory, once it's committed to the database, it will store the log to the disk, which means even the power is suddenly off, you can back up, you can recover your system for on this redo or to do log and then load it straight back to the HANA. You can do the same status, right? So what is a typical hardware configuration for a HANA cluster? I, I mean, I mean in, in a, a normal, I'm mm -hmm. not saying every task or just for demo, but just a regular customer, mm -hmm. if they configure their HANA cluster, mm -hmm. how many nodes? And each node, what type? Mm -hmm. what, what is a typical hardware configuration? Okay. How many cores, how many? How many, how many okay, so I have understand the question. So <coughs> we have uh, 10, SAP is a software company, right? So we don't provide the hardware. I mean, what we do is we, we work with the customers. Yeah, we work with the uh, partners, right? So we have 10 certified partners like IBM, HD, uh, EMC. They provide the uh, hardware and we provide software. So usually HANA is sold so as an appliance as a box combined together with hardware and software. <coughs> so second question is about the real time, right? So what's the real why why we think it's real time and how we do that? So traditional world in the BW world or in the traditional system architecture, all lab and the old or AOTP or OLAP, there are two different scenarios, right? So we have separate system and skip for them based on different requirements. For transaction, one need process fast, and for analytics, we usually do the ETL process, which means extract the transformation and the load data to the OLAP uh, systems. And usually, this may take uh, more than six hours or even more, even one day. And uh, all the data you get in the OLAP system is not real time. It could be the day before. Uh, so, which means with that structure, architecture, you cannot do the real time analysis on this. But for HANA, <coughs> everything is stored in the memory, in the colony store. You simply run the queries on top of the memory store, and then you get the real time inside of your business. Okay. So, what language do you use to write the apps? Hmm? For the application? What language? For the application? It's, yeah. a, it's totally open. So, we have application server inside of HANA, which we call Access Engine. It supports uh, JavaScript. 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 It's something like Node.js. Node.js. So, okay. yeah, sounds like Node.js. Okay. You have the going to using SSD, SSH, SSH, that's a new generation. Which one? Uh, SSD, the, the hardware desk in the cell. The Solid cell state. Yes. Okay, all your numbers are comparing the, you know, printer that's old technology. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I am not quite familiar with hardware, so maybe for yes. Question so, like so how, how, how does uh, HANA deal with the streaming data coming in? Mm -hmm. Does HANA have an, an interface to deal with streaming data coming in? Yes. Can you we'll cover this I have a question about the real time. Mm -hmm. how, how prevention uh, formula one? Mm -hmm. Well, it's a hard planning mm -hmm. and it produces data. Consider that's a real time. Yeah. And if I want to analyze that, that card 
driving. Mm -hmm. How do you connect to the car? You put the oh, computer in the car? Or? <laughs> so you put the sensor in the car, uh -huh. and then you then telecom to send data, or even we see. Oh. Yeah. 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 Medical, I need to check. Yeah, but, but healthcare is one of the very important in industry, and we even hold a healthcare form in Panama before. Yeah. Every industry. Mm -hmm. I think Kesa is it. Yeah, like Kesa. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm not I'm not for the marketing team. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> So I don't have all the SAP has a customer stories, but there are over 2,000 customers, so I cannot figure out all the customers. Yeah. <coughs> then speed real time is two, supposed to be two reasons why, why HANA is uh, useful. And we also, support any kind of data combined with struct data and unstruct data all together in the same box. So you get data from your social media stream, click, click streaming. Uh, we also have started doing vehicle, uh, they, basically they produce ODB device which is installing a vehicle and uh, extract data from vehicle's uh, computer, put the data back to HANA. And the use that, say, analysis the driver behavior and the sell that solution to maybe, maybe I should not talk too much about the use case because we signed MNDA with the startups, just like JC Analytics, we should not tell, share too much about the use case, right? But <coughs> something like that. And we also have uh, machine data from manufacturing uh, device, uh, devices, geospatial data, all these different kind of data can be imported to HANA. And on top of that data, we provide a unified way to access that data, which is SQL. Like, so <coughs> you use X SQL to do the normal database interaction and you use SQL to do fuzzy search. So this is about how you do the search in HANA with the SQL. You just create a full text index based on the table. Uh, and after that, you can use a keyword. We extend SQL using contains keyword. So you can basically search, search your patterns in the uh, table with that text. And we also expand SQL to have some new keywords for geospatial and processing, like something like points or polycom, uh, these geospatial uh, specific algorithms available. And the, in addition to that, actually it's not only like this, we also provide text analysis uh, engines for that. So far, we have support 31 or 32 languages, include both traditional Chinese and the simplified Chinese, right? So with this, with that, you can uh, you can get the information from Weibo or Weixin. You just put it to HANA and the run as text analysis. And HANA will do the uh, entity extraction or even sentiment analysis. So from that text, you can understand this person or this people is positive or negative with, with such topic, right? So this is very useful for something like digital marketing or marketing campaign. You want to monitor how people interact with the campaign, right? So that's about all kind of data. 
And we also provide a data visualize, virtualization or data validation, which means allow you to create a virtual tables, which is processing in another server or in another database, something like Hadoop or Hive. Right? This is a real integration between HANA and Hadoop. You create a virtual table. Uh, after that, you do everything, you do the development in HANA. Virtual table is just like normal tables in HANA. Right? You use HANA, SAP HANA Studio, as a unified modeling and development environment to build something. And uh, <coughs> uh, we also uh, optimize the data transfer between uh, data HANA and the Hadoop. So we are not transfer all the data from Hadoop. If something we can do in SAP HANA side, we are not ask for HANA, just to minimize the data transfer and to get the performance advantages. Right? And for some functions missing in traditional database or in Hadoop, we also, SAP HANA, can compensate that functionality deficit in, in HANA. Yeah. This is a new feature we introduced in SP6, which is uh, released about three months ago. Yeah. This is about the scalability. So we have, do have options for both scale up and scale up. So this is a performance testing with different no, number of nodes in HANA. So according to our testing, is I have a full report and I even have the C system, access to C system to can run this in real time. So there's no other variables. Everything's predictable with in memory computer. <coughs> don't like disk. Memory, you, so how fast to access memory is predictable. So, we have to do a test, uh, we have three queries to select a customer or material for one month, for six months, or for five years with different number of nodes. So we have a system with 16 nodes with 100 billion nodes. We have a node with, with system with 95 nodes with 1,200 billion nodes. You can see the response time is not increased a lot. So it's a liner scalability. So Hadoop, uh, I mean, batch processing, it uses uh, uh, natural uh, resource for very efficient batch, mm -hmm. uh, batch processing. Uh, and how, how about uh, what uh, kind of variable, key variable, kind of adopt in, uh, in uh, realizing So we not com compete with Hadoop oh, directly. Yeah, so the table and problem, yeah, yeah. problem. Yeah. So Hadoop is a format we use for massive data processing. Yeah, and, and, and uh, I, 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 sorry about that. Yeah. A follow up question is, uh, you know, of course it's cool. You combine, uh, I mean, link uh, uh, Hana with uh, Hadoop, right? And what is the boundary between real time and historical? Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the, the way I mentioned boundary is like. Uh, Three days ago, one days ago, one hour ago, or three minutes ago. Mm -hmm. Now, before three minutes ago, all data are gonna go Hadoop because that's uh, according to my definition, they're gonna be historical. Mm -hmm. Within three minutes, those are all real, near, uh, real time or near real time, or mm -hmm. they call near time. Mm -hmm. So, what are the boundaries? I mean, uh, how do you, or you don't have a boundary? I mean, when you uh, you know, uh, linking, uh, combining Hadoop with uh, HANA mm -hmm. as a unified system, mm -hmm. so you can handle both historical data as well as real-time yeah. data, right? Yeah, so there are two different options we provide for the integration with Hadoop. Why is something like this, you know, the virtual table rights, everything's still processing in Hadoop is a near real-time integration. Uh, of course, you have to pay the, uh, the time to process, right? So it's not fast, Hadoop is not fast. Uh, another way is you actually extract data from Hadoop to HANA. That's we have a data service component provided for you to do that. And with that, you can take the advantage of the memory processing, right? It depends on which way you want to say. You extract data from Hadoop? Yeah. That's two different options. 
So SDK HANA is also open. So it's not open source, but it's open for user. Uh, just like you can load any type of data, PDF, CSV, binary, or hard disk or MySQL data to HANA, right? And uh, uh, it's open to any HTML5 or JavaScript library. So we have application server embedded there, allow you to export the data using all data uh, or JDBC, so traditional database connected like ODBC, JDBC, ODBO, right? And uh, in addition to that, we also provide uh, HTML5 library and the HTML5 and the JavaScript library, uh, which we call SAP UI5. So it's a SAP HTML5 library. It's pre-installed in HANA. So everyone, once you get the HANA system, you already have the library there. Uh, and this allows you to very simple to build some very nice chart. Maybe I can show you the library. So this is a SDA UI5 chart library. We provide <coughs> all different type of uh, charts. <coughs> it's all free and it's already included in the HANA installation. So everyone mm, very easy to use. And uh, another demo example I can show you, I mentioned to you before is MBA. Maybe we can just take this time to do that. <coughs> size is a little bit small so it's difficult yeah you see MBA run <coughs> it stays with SAP so let me show you who is your favorite player LeBron James LeBron James huh? yeah, yeah so pick, <laughs> yeah, it's gone. It's retired already. So, this is the data for the blind gems, and then you can also select, select this and we say that good season. And you see all the data, all the calculations, they are calculated on real time. So, the, the, the position is based on real time data? It's not a based on real-time data, it's about real-time calculation. Real-time calculation? Yeah. Data is the first, I mean, data is the first time. Data is historic, yeah. It's not real-time. I don't think that's real-time. You can produce a nice score, but you have to measure the game you want, you can play the nice. Real-time is facing the response time. Yeah, we are talking about the response time. So if you take this data, this amount of data to a traditional database, it may take several minutes to do this calculation, right? So now it's about the response time within. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, you see the, the website is running on XS engine, and uh, the data from HANA is using JSON format. 
การไปพูดเรื่องเดตเราคือติดจอคืออีบังการซีอีอวิชูเอเลียคิดจะไปจอ <laughs> That's no way. No. That's not a possible. Not possible. Your cluster can be scaled infinitely. Possible. It's not about the scalability. It's more like you put your sensor in the yeah, your yeah, ball like, like in the <laughs> yeah. You, somebody even even somebody is working on that. It still need time to put the data to database line. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Next time, when you ask a question, let's take it offline. Yeah, it's more like it could be individual one on one. Yes, yes. Good point. <laughs> so maybe let me finish this slide first before it cook to the end. <coughs> yeah, simple city. Before, for different type data processing, you may need different uh, dedicated server for that, right? Like. So this is how typical architecture looks like. Like you have a um, server for predictive, you have a server for text mining, and then you store the intermediate result. You processing this in your application server. So this F logic are they all JavaScript? Or something else. Oh, this is a traditional way, so it could be anything, Java, .NET, PHP, oh. depends on. <coughs> and the child, SAP HANA is something in this side. So in the database layer, you can, uh, of course, you can implement through using R, or you can implement an SQL script, which is an extension of SQL. So it's a, uh, uh, have have valuable type support extension and uh, have the control flow support uh, extension which you can like complex calculation logic in the database layer and uh, we have embedded application server layer which embed um, JavaScript runtime engine inside uh, based on Mozilla's spider monkey so <coughs> you can write server side JavaScript using any JavaScript library to implement the logic. Nowadays, JavaScript is also quite popular in the server side, in the server side like Node.js, like with a no blonding and uh, uh, even the loop mechanism. Like. So the server side JavaScript in uh, SAP Access Engine is something similar to that. So you can you implement the JavaScript code in the server side Java, server side. Uh, or use just using all data protocol. So your UI using HTTP address call to consume this all data services from from HANA. That's it. <coughs> yeah, and we also embed predictive analysis library we call PAL. In addition to that, also provide R integration. So now I think we have more than. 40 or 50 algorithms like key means, ABC classification interface, very easy algorithms. But we also have some operator uh, decision to use regulation, consensus, and these algorithms are available here. Yeah. So, as an R developer, do I need to use your R package which you publish your system? Oh, no, no. So, we have two different libraries for predict analysis. PAL is implemented in C. Part how, of how, how, how many algorithms in PAL? Now it's around 40. 40. Yeah. But it's all this information is public, so it just as if you Google PAL HANA, you can find also algorithms. And we provide the guidelines of each algorithm as well. I'll show you later, maybe. <coughs>
this is more important today how we provide HANA as a mm -hmm. services. Yep. So we have by default HANA is a combination of hardware and software, so we have HANA applied. Uh, this is usually the choice for big customers, right? And we have this uh, hardware vendor, HP, IBM, this called the Huawei in China. <coughs> and uh, we host uh, SAP HANA Enterprise Cloud, which is a, a private cloud hosted by SAP. Uh, it's usually it's also for SAP big customers as well. But for startups, we provide SAP HANA 1 and the SAP HANA 1 Premium, uh, which is running on AWS and for AWS. Uh, Web services. Before you mentioned that's free, but um, what do you mean free yeah, in the AWS? Yeah, so here mm -hmm. is the HANA 1, mm -hmm. the last version, and we also have a developer edition. Mm -hmm. So for the be a member of our program for the first 12 months, mm -hmm. you can get a HANA developer and the test edition uh, for free. HANA li license. For SAP, it's free, so mm -hmm. we don't charge anything for you. Mm -hmm. But um, you have to pay Amazon for the oh. hosting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How much is that? Hmm? It's about $2 uh, per hour. $2 per hour? Does Amazon oh. charge you for that? This is about the summary. Why we think HANA is a platform which is suitable for a startup to build something on top. Yeah. I'd like you to comment on the competing products. Mm -hmm. I know just on the database layer, okay. there's uh, Monica, which is also yeah, HP. HP yeah. 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 There are quite a few other. Do you, are you familiar with other databases as well? I am not a database person. Yeah, Oracle. It's Oracle actually just a new, new load, newly load of the in-memory. Yeah, Oracle just, uh, <laughs> Oracle just announced uh, in 12C, yeah, all in memory. memory yeah. All in memory. Yeah, uh, in the open world, like that. Yeah, yeah. so my question is, actually, mm -hmm. I know that HANA is more than that. It's more, more than a database. Yeah. So, Be more than happy to do that. So, Oracle announced here, most of the time, Oracle announced in Type C, right? It, it's not a tool in memory database, but it's still provided in memory option with both low store and the corner store, right? So, the different SAP HANA also have a low store, corner store. The difference is Oracle is a duplicate data between low store and the corner store, which means it's data duplica duplication in the memory takes more memory, consider the limitation of the memory size, right? And they also uh, take, uh, have risk to synchronize data between low star and current star. But this is not important. Most importantly is 12, even 12C, it's an uh, enhancement or improvement based on existing architecture, which means it's not a design to use multiple CPU cores. Mm -hmm. It's not designed for parallelization. Right. That's the key advantage of SAP. Evolution is a parallelization. Actually, we are, IBM DB2 also provides this constant option, but we more consider like in-memory cache instead of in-memory computing. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, actually, Open source is uh, more like competitors for us. Yeah. But there no open source project for real time in memory. Actually, it's, it has, but it's not something like yeah, as yeah, compressive as HANA. Like yeah. So if you pick up so open source, which open source project in memory? Uh, like KDB. 
So if you pick open source, usually you have to have dedicated server. You want to do this, so you pick up this free stuff, you pick one, do that, you pick up stuff. In the end, you may have five or six stack in your architecture. And even you cannot complete what you want, right? So we want to make HANA as a device platform, as a one-stop shopping. So everything is there. Everything is very easy to consume. So you just talk to HANA. You mentioned that uh, more of the population. Mm -hmm. uh, I wonder what if you input data as a picture. Mm -hmm. I want to find your face mm -hmm. on the database. You mean the graphy? Yeah. Uh, the face yeah. like an Can you do that? Uh, we have a graphing engine in HANA. Uh -huh. But it's just a new, uh, it's a released about, it's not released right now, but it's now it's in an early adopt phase. The public will release in the next uh, package. But so far, I don't have insight on that, what, what we can do. But in yes, the- it is, not, it is not a face, it mm -hmm. is a car. Yeah. So I want to search a particular car mm -hmm. on the screen. Yeah, I know I that. Have a picture of that yeah. thousand car. Yeah. You can you mean, mean, car mean, mean, you mean, you mean near, near full station? Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, try to capture your license. Right? Yeah, that's yeah, that's the shape. Yeah, the car has your license. Here yeah, I want to find the real how many Lincoln Town cars yeah, yeah. straight at a particular So you don't need to stop uh, you know, in front of full station. You just drive as normal. You know. Yeah, I know that. Yeah. Okay. This problem cannot be solved. Yeah, it's not, it's not announced. Yet, but I, s I do think we are working on that. <coughs> yeah, probably will be this next uh, spot package. Yeah, so if we, because we still have time, maybe I can show you connect the system and show you something over there. Okay.